Welcome RPA Champions and Automation Champions. I am the RPA Champion and in today's video we are going to see build a robot that is going to automate the different activities for us on a web page. Now I have demonstrated in my previous video how I built a robot that connected me to over 28,000 participants at a tech conference called Collision. Now I have uh, used uh, Power Automate to build a robot in a half an hour or less that has saved me countless hours of manual and uh, boring activities in terms of connecting to different participants. Now, in this video, you will learn how to use Power Automate to extract data from a web page, how to save it on Excel, and in the second part of the video, we will see how we can automate different actions inside of a web page. By the end of the video, you will have a fully functioning robot that you can build on on the app that I'm building it on or on any other app that you would like. Saving you or learning how to build robots that are going to allow you to save countless hours of time so that you can go play with your dog or go bake some bread. Now, uh, this video is intended for beginners and medium users of Power Automate. It is, there is also a little bit for everybody because I will be sharing best practices, tips and tricks and uh, things that I have learned uh, along the way that are going to help you save time when building your robots also. When building your robots, it is very important to keep in mind that uh, the least actions that we use in our robot, the best it is, so that there's less to maintain, less to build, and so on. So building robot is like an art, but you don't need any kind of knowledge or any kind of coding knowledge for it. Having said that, let's jump right into this video and start building our robot with Power Automate Desktop. So in this example, that this is the collision app that we are going to be automating. Now, these are all different participants that are at an app. There is over 28,000 of them or so. We can filter through them. We can, uh, we can see uh, different categories. So we're going, to see, we're going to all do all of this with our robot as well. But what we want to do is basically we want to uh, click on one of these people uh, and we want to connect. To this person so we want to request a connection and we want our robot to do that after that we want our robot maybe to engage in a conversation with this person so click on chat and uh, be followed to the chat part of the of the uh, app and send a, uh, a chat message now uh, to do that there is different ways every robot can be uh, can be built in different ways meaning that we could uh, we can take different paths. However, as I said before, or maybe I haven't, but building a robot is like an art. In terms that the least steps that we use to build our robot, the better it is. Now, what we want to do is we want to click on each one of these people and do those different actions. Now, we could do it in different ways, but I found a way that uh, for me works pretty well and that is pretty fast as well. Meaning that uh, not a lot of steps are required so what i'm going to do in this example i'm going to since each one of these boxes is a link to the profile i'm going to extract this link from each one of these boxes from all of the different pages that are here so we will go to all of the different pages and we are going to extract all of the different profiles now once we extract all of the different links to the profile so this is a link to the profile we are going to save these links to an excel file after that, we are going to have another part of the robot that is going to go through this Excel file and open or navigate through the links and navigate to each one of these links, send the request message and send also a chat message. So that is going to be our robot and uh, it is going to do that for thousands and thousands of times until it uh, runs, out of, uh, uh, runs out of requests or if something happens like it runs out of memory it breaks down the computer goes into standby or some other uh, thing that we have not planned however we are going to include some exception handling or some things that are going to make our robot a little bit stronger and better so that if things unexpected things happen uh, then we then the robot is not going to break but it's going to continue and continue doing what it's supposed to be doing so let's jump into Power Automate and see how we can build this process. Now we're going to start from a new flow. 
just before starting, I want to uh, remind you that downloading and installing Power Automate is completely free and very easy. I do have a video about it and link in the description below. So once you have downloaded and installed Power Automate, you will be able to follow along from here. This is behind of this screen. This is the welcome screen. Now when we create a new flow, we're going to call this Collision App 2. We're going to create a flow and once we create a flow, we will be able to start building our process. Now, as soon as the new flow is created, a new pop-up window is going to appear that uh, where you're going to be building your automation. So this is the place where you're going to be building your automation. As you can see, is entirely drag and drop. You have a set of actions that you can use. You have your variables or different data items, images, or things that you store on the right side, right here. So once again, uh, variables, data, and things that you store on your right side and configuration parameters. While on the left side, you have the different actions that you can do and use group by different categories. Now there is a lot of details that we can see, but I think we should see the details as we are building our process. Now, this is our, uh, our Canva. This is our empty piece of paper or our uh, empty drawing. And we have to draw our robot on here. So we said that the first thing that we want our robot to do is we wanted to go to this page and uh, extract the link of each one of these profiles. Why? So that we can have this link in an Excel sheet and then directly from the Excel sheet, we can just uh, navigate this different uh, profile pages and request a request or chat. Alternatively, what we could do is we could uh, navigate this page and have the robot click here, click, uh, make a couple of clicks and then click back to go back to the, the page. However, with that, if we are, for example, on maybe page, uh, page seven or page eight, it is going to be hard for the robot to kind of keep track of everywhere uh, or where we are and on being on the right place. So that's why we're extracting everything and putting it in an Excel sheet. It is just going to be easier. And the objective and the art of creating the robot is comes from making it as easy as possible. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to create or launch Google Chrome. So we are going to launch. We have different options for different browsers to launch. I have noticed that uh, Microsoft Edge currently is not the most stable option for Power Automate. It often loses connection, so I would not recommend you using it. I would recommend you to use Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Chrome. Keep in mind that Internet Explorer is being discontinued by Microsoft, so in the future, all of your automations on Internet Explorer will have to migrate to the other browsers. Why? Because there will be no more support for Internet Explorer, only Edge. So here we have the action that is going to allow us, the first action of our robot that is going to allow us to open a web browser. Now, uh, it is pretty straightforward. So what we want to do is we want to launch a new instance, meaning that we want the browser to start from scratch. Also, we want the initial URL to be the page of our attendees, the list of all of the attendees. So we want the browser to navigate there. Another important thing to set usually is the maximized window. This will allow the window to be also in uh, full screen and it will allow you to see what is happening and it will also bring it to the, fore to the foreground. Not always, we will have to focus it also. So we can also decide to clear cache or clear cookies if it's required. And also the wait for page load is enabled automatically. I highly recommend that you use this, uh, this capability. So what this does is it waits for all of the different elements on your page to load before going on to the next step and this is important because the robot uh, acts very fast and if you don't set this it is just going to go to the next step and some items might have not been loaded and your robot will fail now as you can see um, there is another option that says that if the, there is a pop-up dialogue uh, do something about it you can close it press the button in our case we're not going to do anything and one final thing about this action is that all of the variable that is produced is going to be stored in browser. So uh, we can reference this later and you're going to see how this works. This little X right here means that this is a variable and is going to be stored as a variable. When I click on it, I will see that there is 2% sign, the name, and this represents a variable in Microsoft Power Automate. What is a variable? A variable is just something that allows you to hold information, hold data, hold the name, or hold some kind of data. In addition to this, 
we can also go and set directly exception handling exception handling is something that allows our robot to uh, not fail and if it fails to do different things so we could show an error or we can continue with the flow or we can uh, create a new rule with an if condition an else statement and so forth in our case for this we're not gonna set anything right now so let's create our first our first action so in our robot right now we have the first action which is to launch google chrome now when i hit the run button we will activate our robot and we can see that our robot is working it is opening google chrome and is going to the correct page now the next step is to extract each one of these links inside of here and also to navigate throughout all of the different pages and extract every single link that there is there now there is a very simple way to do this also there's different ways to do it we're going to try to do it in the simplest way possible so what we are going to do is we're going to look for extract data from a web page uh, we're going to go to the web automation and web data extraction and we're just going to take the extract data from a web page and we are going to put it here however before we do that we might want to click here and maybe filter our uh, filter our uh, our list to only specific to only specific so let's say i'm interested in only media i would like to click here and filter on media so let's see also how this is done before we extract the link there is, as I always keep on saying, there is different ways to do it. We can, the easiest way to do it is using the web recorder. So if we hit the web recorder, it is going to open uh, this uh, pane. We're going to tell it we are going to use Chrome. But before that, we're just going to highlight this window so that uh, it attaches automatically to this window. How we're going to know that? It tells us that it's going to go to a web page and this is going to be the first action that is going to create. Now, if I just deselect this and I hit the start recording button I will be able to record all of the different actions so if I click here we can see that a new element has been added right here and after that I'm going to select for example uh, guests so we are going to filter for all of the guests uh, we can also go for industry but I think this demonstrates the point and this is going to be enough for the time being now, once this is done, we can either pause the recording, do different things, or we can just finish and have our different actions and steps already created for us. Now, once you add something from a web recorder, there is notes that are added to your process. These are the two notes that Microsoft Power Automate has automatically generated. So it tells you this is where we are going to start using the web recorder, and this is where we're going to end using the web recorder. Now, I don't need these and I will delete them. Additionally, it has also added a useful action, which is go to web page. This is going to uh, redirect to this web page. So since we are opening already on this page, we do not need this. Now let's click inside of this and see what has been generated. So this is click on a web page element, and this comes from this uh, from the uh, web automation on the right side of the actions. We can find it right here. But first, let's see what it has generated. So web browser instance here, if you remember, we put the variable of our browser. Now this allows us to connect to that browser. If we had open different browsers, we could select which browser we want to use. Additionally, it has also added something that is called a UI element. And right here, we can see the link to it. Now, if I, I can add new UI elements, or I can see the ones that have been produced by the recording. It's an SVG and an input field. So in this case, we're using the SVG. And also, we can set some uh, advanced parameters like wait for the page to load. This is always good to keep on. And also, we can add some exceptions. At this point, we're not going to be doing any of that. Now, if I go to our UI elements right here on this pane, first of all, I can, at the top, I can see the variables, then I can see the UI elements and the images. Now, this is just the different elements that I'm using to insert inside of the different actions. So, for example, for the variables, I can see the web browser uh, variable is right here. Here, I can add input output variables. We're not going to be using this in this process. Additionally, here in the UI elements, I can see all the different elements that I have spied and identified. So this is the filter item and the input is the checkbox. So very simple, very easy, very straightforward. So we launch, we click on the SVG in this example. So this is on the filter. And I can, if I want, I can rename this with 
uh, F2, I believe. Yes. So I can call this filter. And I can call this guests to make it a little bit more easy to work with. So we have filter and guests. We have our two actions. Now let's launch this process and see if it's working so far. Then we don't need to add any weights or anything. So it has opened the filter and it has clicked on the guest. It has filtered the page. So the next step is to extract every single link inside of this table that has been generated for us. Now let's go and do that. So we're going to use this. We're going to use this action, or we can also use the web recorder. Now let's continue using the web recorder since we have been using it so far. And again, we're going to do the same steps. We're going to click on Chrome. We're going to click on Next, and we're going to click on the Start Recorder. Now the only difference right now from before, I'm not going to click. I will right-click on this, and a new menu is going to appear. The menu is going to give me different options such as extract element value and I can extract different things and here we can see that I can extract the link. We can also wait for the web page to load so when it contains some text, when the uh, link appears and so forth. We can also take a screenshot and we can also select a parent UI element to make references. Now in our example we're just going to extract the link. So once I have extracted the first link I have other links to extract. However, this is a smart system. And if I click on the next link and I just do the same, you will see that it has identified all of the different links and is going to extract all of the different links. Now, the only difference or the only problem right now is, is that it's going to extract only the links on this page. Let's take it one step at a time. Let's finish this and see what we have inside of our process. Once again, we can see that uh, it has generated the notes, an additional navigate page, so we're going to get rid of all of that. And it has generated the extract data from a web page. I will move this all the way to the bottom. Let's click inside of it and see what is happening. So we can see that it's attaching to our browser instance, the variable, and it's also producing a output, an output variable. Uh, this is where all of the data is going to be stored. Now, I can choose automatically if I want to store the data inside of a variable or inside of an Excel spreadsheet. If I want it automatically and directly inside of an Excel so that I can work with it and use it, I will just click Excel spreadsheet. Alternatively, if I wanted it as a variable so that I could use it later on inside of my process for different things, it will be easier to keep it as a variable and work from it as a variable. In this case, I'm going to select Excel spreadsheets. Why? Because I would like to see everything that is extracted right away in an Excel sheet. And after that, I will use that Excel sheet for my for the other part of the process. So let's click Save and let's see what is going to happen with our process. So it should launch the web page. It should filter the different elements. It should find the guests and it should extract all of the information and save it in an Excel sheet. Now we see that the Excel sheet has opened and I have and I have 24 24 uh, links but this is not enough this is just 24 we are aiming for 28,000 and going back now we have our uh, excel list of 24 participants but it is nowhere near enough now let's see how we can find out and how we can extract all of the uh, all of the different users now if i right click on this if i open it and i go back to the browser that we were using and I click on the right, uh, on the right click, I will automatically, this window is going to appear. So what is this window? This window is showing us the extraction preview. So once again, let me just walk you through what I have done. I have opened the extract data from the web page window, and then I went to the browser that was created. I right clicked uh, on one of the links or anywhere, and the extraction preview has been automatically opened for me. Now, I can do different things such as, for example, go to the advanced settings and click on the use paging. Now, once I do that, I will have the ability to select this item that is going to allow us to cycle through the different pages. Now, if I click on this item, so once again, we are going to, we're going to refresh this and start from scratch with the advanced options of using paging enabled 
So I will click on this. I will extract the link. I will click on the next one. I will extract the link as well. After that, I will click on this button and I will set the element as a pager. Now, when I run through the different elements, I can see that everything that has been inserted, uh, extracted. So we have 24 links and we also have a 25th link that corresponds to the next page. Now, when we click finish, the window is going to change a little bit. So extract data only from the first five pages. So we can tell it that it should skip to the different from the first five pages. Now, if I click save, and we run this process again what the process should do is it should open google chrome it should open our list of attendees it should filter them and it should select all of them after that it should navigate through the different pages as you can see however there is a little a little confusion going on why because it is clicking on this button instead of this button now i've tried also in uh, in the previous example to figure out why why it is clicking on this one when i have exactly selected this one i was not able to figure it out but uh, there is many easy workarounds that we can do so for example something that i came up with was that i could just leave it as it is and i could just click on this button a bunch of times and then i could use the pages just to go and cycle back so in theory if i were to click all the way to the end and count how many clicks there are like maybe 30 or 40 or 100 I could, I could then uh, use that extraction without changing it any further. Now, let me show you what I mean. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to our web page. Let's close a couple of browsers to have a little bit of more memory. And let's refresh this page. Now, once the page has been refreshed, uh, let's use the web recorder again. Now, we are going to use on Chrome and we can start recording and select this button immediately. Now we can see that this is a button, a UI element that is a button, and it has been uh, obtained with the on-screen recorder. I'm just going to finish this automatically, and I have, and now I have this button. So this is, uh, let's see what this button is going to do, and let's change this to just uh, two maybe. So let's delete all of the extra actions that were created and let's run this process again. So we're going to launch Chrome. We're going to filter as previously. We're going to click on the button. We're going to go to the one page forward and then we're going to use our extraction and it's going to extract also from that page and from the page previously. So if we go to our Excel sheet, maybe the third Excel sheet that has been created, we should have double the connections. And as a matter of fact, we do, we have 24 plus the other 24, we have 48 connections. Now we are almost there, ladies and gentlemen. What do I mean by we are almost there? We are one step closer to extracting the profiles of the 10,000 participants at Collision. So with every robot, you are going to run into little, uh, little difficulties, little issues, but with just a little bit of thinking and a little bit of uh, out of the box thinking you can save yourself a lot of time uh, in debugging and trying to figure out uh, how to make it the uh, how to make it work the way that you wanted to when you could just create a little work around for it now let me just uh, give this one more try and see if i can change the if i can change uh, the pager so we can see that if we go to the advanced settings we have already a pager that is this. Now, if I take this and I open a notepad element, this is going to be the, the selector that we have, ident that has identified automatically for us. Now, that is perfectly fine. Now, if we go to the button that we have added here and we go into our elements and we click on this button, we can see that this element, on the other hand, has a different selector. Now, what we could do is we could take this selector and maybe replace it with the other selector. So if we go to our notepad, we can see that this is one of the selectors that was created for us. And this is the other selector that was created. 
So we can see also that there is a little bit of difference. So just to take a look, uh, it is actually pretty, it is pretty identical and pretty similar. But for some strange reason, it is not working. Now, if I were to replace this, if I were to replace this, it would still, it would still select on the other page. So uh, what we should do is we should uh, go back to our Google Chrome. And what we need to do is we need to click on this button a bunch of times. Like, let's say we want to click on it 50 times until it reaches the end. So to do something like that, it is extremely simple. We just need to add a loop. A loop is a cycle of different activities and you will be using this a lot with your robot. So we want to tell it start from zero and end at 10, for example, increment by one. And then we're going to put our button right here. So we're going to press our button 10 times. After that, we are going to click the back button 10 times and extract everything uh, and extract everything so let's see if this is going to work let's close our different excels so in the previous one we had 24 we're not going to save this and we're going to run this process again and see what happens so what should be happening you should filter we have seen that this works and now it should click 10 times to the different participants so it is going to scroll to the different participants once it reaches cycle number 10 or loop number 10 it is going to start extracting information. Now it's going to extract page 10, page 9, page 8, page 7, page 6, page 5, and so on. Now once all of this data has been extracted, it is going to save the link inside of our uh, Excel sheet. And from this Excel sheet, we are going to be able to go to the next step of our process. As you can see, we have currently how many participants have we managed to connect. We have managed to get 240 participants. Excellent. We are close. We are even closer to our goal of 28,000. Now, if I were to do this same action for every single one of these participants, and if I were to cycle to the end page just by counting how many clicks I have, uh, I have, or just by setting a random number like a very high number, it would it would click all the way until here. Then it would continue clicking, but nothing would happen. And then the pages would start going back all the way till the end. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first part of our robot. We have launched a web browser. We have extracted, we have clicked, interacted with the web page. We have, we have been thinking creatively of how we can uh, walk around different issues, different bugs and different things that might happen in our robot instead of breaking our head and trying to figure out how to do that exact exact action the objective of the robot is to extract all of the links to the different participants how we do it it doesn't really matter what matters is that we kind of do it in as little time as possible and in a way that it is uh, not going to break and is going to be accurate and effective now there is always again better ways of doing it this is just one way of doing it so uh, Getting back to us, what is the next step that we want to do? The next step that we want to do is we want to navigate to each one of these profiles and we would like to connect with them. We would like to connect and we would like to also chat with them. So the guests are the only people that I have still not yet connected with, the, therefore leaving some, um, some area where we can practice and work and work and see how the robot will work. So the next thing that we have to do from this process, once we have extracted everything, we have to we have to navigate to one of the links inside of our Excel sheet. So we can see here that we are saving all of the variables inside of the Excel instance. Now the next thing that we have to do is we have to get the data out of the Excel instance. So to do that, we have to we can do it different ways, but uh, an easy way is to look for the Excel action right here and see the different options and uh, uh, capabilities that we can use straight out of the box. So we can launch a cell, we can attach to a running cell, we can read from an Excel worksheet, we can save, write on Excel. So already read from an Excel worksheet, this sounds like it could be doing, uh, like it could be useful for me. So we're gonna retrieve, retrieve the value of a single cell. 
we are going to retrieve not the values of a single cell, but the values from a range of cells. So we're going to start column at column A. We're going to start at row 1. We're going to end, let's see our Excel sheet. We're going to end at row 240. And in the same column. Now, there is a way that I can get these values dynamically. In my case, I don't need to get them dynamically because I know exactly how many rows and how in which columns my data is. So to avoid adding extra and additional steps, I will just hard code it in this exact way. Um, that, is, that is pretty much everything that we need to set. We can also see that the variable produced is Excel data. So this is going to be a table of the different uh, of the different uh, information that is inside of our Excel sheet. Now this is also a additional steps that that it can be a little bit redundant. Why? Because if we say this to a data table already, we do not need this. Uh, we do not need this to extract from our worksheet. Why am I doing it like this? Because in case. Uh, in case I want to build another robot, so one robot will be just in charge of extracting from different filters. So, for example, uh, I would have different robots, one that is extracting the attendees, one that is extracting the guests, one that is extracting the investors, and saving all of this in different, uh, different Excel files. So that could be one robot. Now, let's see how we could create another robot, but let's not complicate our life, and let's just create a subflow. And let's call this, uh, well, let's do it like this. Let's call this extract, and let's create another subflow, and let's call this connect. Or how about message? Yeah, let's call it message. So in this one, we are going to message the different participants, and in this one, we are going to extract them. So in the main flow, we're just going to leave the launch Chrome and we're going to move all of this information into our extract. Here, we are going to add a subflow and we're going to call our subflow extract subflow. We're also going to add another subflow and we're going to call our subflow message subflow. That is excellent. Let also let us save this file as well. We can save this file inside of this folder and we can call it test collision participants. Now I can close this file and I can uh, let's just disable this activity and see if this is still working. So when I run this, I should. I'm expecting that all the same things happen. The only difference is that I have added an extra action that is going to extract all the different information and put it in an Excel sheet. Now, again, I have uh, this is going to do it for the first 10 pages of these participants. However, for the sake of uh, time, we're not going to do it for all of the 28,000 participants or for all of the participants inside of the uh, inside of the list because it will take. Too long. So we're just working with the initial 10 pages of these participants. 10 times 24, that is 240 participants that we have inside of our Excel sheet that we can work with right now. We have saved this Excel sheet already. Now, if I go back to Power Automate and I see that this has also uh, this has also worked. So it has inserted the data inside of the Excel worksheet. Uh, it has extracted it and it has read the Excel worksheet. Now. Once it has read the Excel worksheet, uh, I could, I can move this in here, and uh, after that, I can start uh, cycling to the different rows inside of the Excel worksheet. Now, how would I do that? With the loop. The only difference is that I wouldn't lose the loop that I used previously. I would just use a for each loop, and this is also so simple. So the only thing that I would need to do is I can see that here. It has produced the Excel data variable. Now, if I select the Excel data variable, what this is going to do, it is going to loop to each single row inside of the Excel data. The Excel data is 240 columns we have and one uh, 240 rows and one column. 
it is also going to produce a current item and that is going to be the row on which we are currently so current item could be 68 which is this link or 75 which is this link and so forth very simple very straightforward very easy i hope that everybody is following along if you're not leave some comments or some questions in the messages below and i would love to explain different things and how we are doing things also if you think that something can be done better differently please share your thoughts and ideas i have read all of your comments very carefully and i'm very grateful to the comments that you have been giving me on my previous videos so that i know how i can make it more entertaining more educational and just better for you watch and learn and one more thing just make sure that you give yourself a pat on the back because you are doing amazing if you want to learn automation this is a great skill that you are going to require and need in the times to come so thumbs up for you keep on learning automation keep on learning power automated desktop and other technologies as well back to our video so we have created our for each loop that is going to navigate to each one of these different links so what we have to do is we have to go to this link we have to go to the following link and so forth so if we need to navigate then we should go to the web automations and we should see if we have anything that resembles what we need so we could go to a web page the current item is currently the web page so if i go here and i select the current item by clicking on this x i would have access to all the different variables that i have i can also open the different variables and i can see uh, uh, how i can get different values of the different so i could for example get how many i can get the count or i can get the column names i don't need that i just need the current item so current item uh, navigate to the url and use the browser instance perfect simpler than this it cannot be so what this should do it should navigate to each one of the different pages let's see if this works so we have our first part which is going to extract all the different things and then we have the second part which is going to uh, read from our excel sheet that was created and is going to iterate through all of them and then in our main uh, in our main flow we have the extract and the message and we have the launching call let's see if this magic works so far so we're opening the browser i have forgot forgot to set to a number less than 10 the different pages so we're going to have to watch the different 10 pages cycle through them once again so let's have a little bit of patience and see the final part of our robot so it is cycling through the different pages it has finished now it's extracting the 240 participants it is going to save them to the excel sheet the excel sheet part is a little bit redundant in this example why because we can also save it to a table and use directly from the table but just to show you how you could visualize it a little bit better uh, we have decided to uh, to save it to an excel sheet and what we can see right now it is that it's opening the different links inside of the excel sheet and it's navigating to each one of those different links what guess what we're gonna do next we are going to connect and chat to each one of these participants we could do also other things such as for example extract their name their location their interest and do whatever kind of we want now let's stop this and let's finalize the final steps of our robot we can see that it's just cycling through this until it has finished the, all of the 240 rows let's add a couple of more actions to this so what we want to do is let's open the browser let's close a couple of these browsers so what we want to do is we would like to connect to this guy and maybe chat to them so for let's see how we can connect that is that is going to be the easiest thing so let's use the web recorder again let's select the page in the background let's click on chrome and now you should by now you should be getting the hang of this because this is pretty straightforward let's start recording let's click on our uh, let's click on the connect button and then let's click on the request button as well so we have button two and button three keep in mind this is one tip or one suggestion that i would like to give to you as you can see that this button has different elements inside of it it has this checkbox it has the requested and it has the button which is appearing in red now uh, you don't really want to click on the span you don't really want to click on the svg here you want to click on the button that is going to give you the most stable uh, the most stable action 
possible because you're using the web element that is a button and you're clicking on the button you're not clicking on the svg or on the span which would still work because you're clicking there but if we are repeating it a thousand times and if we're going really fast it might break in some parts excellent so we have uh, we have our button two and we have our button three that is pretty much all that we need to do to connect with the different participants now let's click on finish and we can see where it has created different elements in our uh, in our process so it has decided that it's going to go to this web page now we don't need that and it's going to press the button on the web page and press another button on the web page now if we test this this is going to work but let me ask you one question what is going to happen when we come here and it cannot click on this because for some reason maybe on that participant i have already requested now this is on the only part where we need to add maybe a little bit of stability to our robot so that it doesn't break when it comes to a page where we have already requested and we want to click on the request and it cannot because it has already requested now this is extremely simple to do the only thing since this is in a loop what we would have to do is go on error and just continue the flow on error by going on to the next action we will do the same with the same with the button below without adding any logic or any kind of complex code what this is going to do is it's going to go to the current link and if, if on that link we cannot click on the button because we have already requested it then it's just going to go to the next action the next action is click the confirmation button but if that button doesn't exist also it's just going to continue and it's going to start with the next link and it's going to do that over and over again let's run this process the only thing that we are going to change we are going to change well it's fine doesn't matter let's have it run 10 times and see what happens i mean this is a uh, really cool automation uh, so it is always fun to watch it work and watch it play at least for me I'm quite passionate about RPA and automation and I think it, help, it has helped me save countless hours of times from different tasks and activities that I do. Uh, this, what we are doing right now, might be considered spam or might be considered not the most meaningful way of creating connections with colleagues or with people. Uh, but uh, from this, we can elaborate this and make it more complex so that it does exactly what we want it to do. And as we can see that right now it is going to different uh, to different connections and is just requesting is just requesting and confirming the request. Now, if we wait a little bit, we might probably uh, come upon somebody that we have already uh, sent a request to, and in that case, our uh, our robot should act accordingly, meaning that it should not uh, it should not uh, it should not break, but it should continue. Now, for some reason, I am not uh, I am not meeting the participant that we have sent the request to, so the robot has is just continuing. So this is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is how we create a super fast automation. Now, just as a little extra bonus on this process, we're going to also send a chat to all of the different participants. Now, let's do this very very quickly. So again, just following the process of what we have done so far, let's use the web recorder once again. Let's use it on Chrome. Let's identify the button of the chat. We can see that a link has appeared in this case. It has taken us to a different page. Let's identify this area right here. So for the text area, I'm going to click the right, uh, right button and I'm going to add text with I and E. Hey nice we're gonna add some text right here and we're gonna write hey nice to meet you hope you enjoyed collision we're gonna add this text and we're gonna see that here we have all of the actions that needed uh, that needed to be created to generate this text after that we are also going to click on this We're going to also click on this and we're going to send our text 
Now let's see, we have created quite a little bit of elements that might not be, all of them might not be required. So let's go back to our process flow and see what we can remove and what we can leave. So I'm just going to uh, uh, think about this again. So this is going to press the connect button. If it fails, it's going to continue with the flow. After that, we're going to click on the other button. On the chat button, we are going to populate the text field. We are going to emulate typing so that we activate the send button. And after that, we are going to click on the send button on the send button. So I think that that is pretty much everything that we need to do. Click on the click on web page SVG and click on polygon. I'm not really sure what these are. So let's go back to our elements that were created. So this is the plus button. I'm not really sure why we would be filling on that. And this is the other buttons that haven't been captured properly. So let's try this so far and see what would happen. So going back to here and going back to the profile person so we click on the chat we are redirected to a different page we are in here and then we click on this button so that should that should do it and we theoretically don't require any more of this page now let's run this from the beginning and let's see what happens so again we are cycling through the different participants the 10 pages of the different participants. Once it has finished cycling, it is going to start going back to the different pages, extracting the information and saving it into an Excel sheet. From that Excel sheet, it will start opening the different, the different web pages. It will connect with an individual and it will, after that, it will send them a message. Now, uh, in this example, we're going to see already requested colleagues. So we see that we have already requested to her. The process is should not break. It should go to the chat. Once it's in the chat, it should go to the other window. It should uh, type in the message and it should send the message. Now, in this example, the message has failed to send for some reason. So we would have to investigate and see why that has, why that has happened. So maybe we'll have to add a weight or in this example, it has worked. So uh, let's see again why it is, uh, if it's going to work with, with this lady as well, or if we have to add some, maybe a weight for it to wait. No, it is working also. Not really sure why it did not work with the first, uh, with the first chat. Let's see on this chat if it's going to work or not. So we have requested for this guy. Let's go to the chat and let's add the message so it is i think it's going a little bit too fast so to avoid something like this let's stop our robot and i will just add a weight before populating before populating the text so i can add a weight i would add a weight here and that should solve the issue. So this will give uh, two seconds of wait before populating the text, make sure that the page is loaded nicely, and then it will insert the text, and then it will also uh, click the send button. So like this, it will work, uh, it should definitely work. I'm not going to check it one more time because I have seen this already a gazillion of times, but it is up to you to now build the robot, try it yourself, and tell me if it's working and ask me all of your questions. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. Leave me a like and a subscribe and a comment and I will get back to you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.